Can one frequency distort another? Mark in Tucson, Arizona wants to know. He says, Paul, can one frequency distort another? A simple case comes to mind. Just a single driver, speaker driver. Let's say that you have a humdinger, <laughs> I heard that term in a while, of a driver that you can drive with individual pure tones within a power range with zero distortion. Now let's drive it with two pure tones, 205,000 hertz simultaneously. Will this result in some distortion in one or the other of those otherwise pure tones? I visualize this as the 5,000 hertz tone vibrating <coughs> on the speaker cone as it is sloshing in and out at 200 hertz. It would seem distortion of the 5,000 hertz tone might occur at different positions of the cone driven by the 200 hertz. Well, you got a couple of things going on there. First off, the quick answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. But there's a couple of things going on here. We have the central question that as an engineer, when you ask me, can two tones played simultaneously, whether in a speaker or in a piece of electronics, can cause a distortion or a third or fourth or fifth tone, my quick answer has to be yes. And what you're describing is called intermodulation distortion the aspect of the speaker that you bring up is also prone to intermodulation distortion, but yet another one, which is called Doppler distortion. And I'll try and cover both of those simply and uh, as effectively as I can. So let's talk about intermodulation distortion. You've probably seen specs for amplifiers, for, you know, whatever you're intending to, to purchase that cover THD and IM. THD, total harmonic distortion, and we've talked about this before, is very simply the fact that when you have a pure tone, let's say a 1000 cycle tone, when that goes through an amplifier or whatever you're trying to measure, if there's anything other than that pure tone, which are called harmonics, um, additional tones that are generated inside of the amplifier, that's called harmonic distortion. And it's simply the addition of more harmonics or harmonics which are higher frequencies than the fundamental. So the, the first harmonic of a thousand is the second uh, harmonic which is a doubling of frequency or 2k. The third is 3k and etc. And, and when you put it through a distortion analyzer you can see oh there's here's the fundamental and now there's a little bit of second and there's a little bit of third and fifth and blah 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 blah. Um, that's total harmonic distortion, and, that, and you add those all up, and that gives you the total, or you can look at specific areas of distortion. Intermodulation distortion is somewhat the same thing, except that the way we would measure that is by putting two or more tones in that uh, are kind of unrelated to each other. They're sort of, let's call them cross-purposes to each other. So we put two tones in and we see if anything else happens other than those two pure tones and the amount of that other stuff, more tones, harmonics coming in, is called intermodulation distortion. So those, does that sort of make sense? So one is just a single tone and it creates harmonics. The other are two or more tones that create harmonics also. The different ways that harmonics, which are unwanted, are generated within an amplifier or a loudspeaker, whatever you're trying to measure. Now the problem that he's describing here more specifically is called Doppler distortion. Doppler is where one frequency is moving at, let's say, a slow rate, and, uh, and this usually happens in speakers because we have a single moving element that is moving at the same time. So as, as the 200 hertz is moving back and forth at that slow rate, it's also moving at 5,000 times a second, and it's 
it's essentially pushing the 5,000 hertz tone at uh, shortening the distance between you and the speaker or lengthening the distance. And we know that as a steady state tone increases or decreases in distance from the listener, especially if it's moving, it will change its frequency the way we perceive it, which is why, you know, a train goes as it goes far away from you or a siren. Any of those things sound different at different as they're moving away from you. So a steady, if you have a, a, a steady sound here and there's some distance, there will be a, a, a time differential between when you hear it and when it was generated. But if it's not moving, then the frequency will be the same. If, it's, if you're moving, then that frequency, it, that, that the amount of movement is added to the, the tone and it changes whether we're going far away or whether we're going closer to. Uh, closer to makes the sound go up and farther away makes the sound go oh, down in frequency. So you have both of those things going on at the same time. How severe that is, well, it really depends a lot on the driver, the, the levels. There's a whole bunch of things going on. But yes, in answer to your question, those are very real distortions and they are certainly easier to deal with in a electronic circuit. We work hard at keeping our levels of THD and intermodulation distortion well below a percent. I mean, we're in the 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. That, that typically is below the level of human hearing. There are other things that we hear, but not those. They don't really affect the way that we perceive sound. In a loudspeaker, really, all you can do is have more drivers so that the woofer, because in this case you've got you know, 200 hertz, that would be a mid-range or a woofer, is if it's trying to also do 5,000 uh, cycles, you'd be better off having that 5,000 cycles done through a tweeter and leave the woofer woofing away at 200 hertz. That's the way you get rid of that Doppler distortion in a loudspeaker. And we've all seen plenty of single driver speakers uh, but they've got that problem and just part of life. Okay. I hope that answers your question. It's a good one. Thank you for asking it and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.